Chapter 9, Mishnah 8. This Mishnah explains the cases listed in the previous Mishnah. What is the case of a woman who reduces her kasuba if her kasuba was 1,000 zoos? But when she came to collect it from her husband, he said to her, you already received your entire kasuba. And she said, I received only 100 zoos. She has not paid the other 900 zoos unless she makes an oath that she is still owed that amount. Since she might not have been careful to note exactly how much her husband paid her, the first time she is obligated to swear. What is the case of one witness who testifies against her and says that her kasuba was already paid? If her kasuba was 1,000 zoos, and when she came to collect it from her husband, he said to her, you already received your entire kasuba, and she said, I did not receive anything. But one witness testifies against her and says that it was paid. She has not paid her kasuba unless she makes an oath that she had not already received it. Although the rule is that one witness does not suffice to prevent a woman from collecting her ksuba, her husband will be troubled if he must pay her when one witness supports his claim that she was already paid. She is therefore required to swear so that he will at least be satisfied that she believes she is telling the truth. What is the case of collecting from sold property? If her husband sold his property to others and she is collecting her ksuba from the buyers, she has not paid her kasuba unless she makes an oath that she had not already received it. Had she collected the kasuba from the husband himself, he might have claimed that he already paid her and insisted that she must swear first. Since the buyers are not in a position to know whether she was paid, the court makes this claim on their behalf. She must therefore swear before she could collect from them. What is the case of collecting from the property of her husband's orphans? If her husband had died and left his property to his orphans, i.e. his heirs, and she is collecting her kasuba from the orphans, she has not paid her kasuba unless she makes an oath that she had not already received it. Since the heirs, too, are not in a position to know whether she was already paid, the court demands on their behalf that she must swear before she could collect. What is the case of collecting her kasuba not in her husband's presence? If he divorced her and then went overseas, and she wants to be paid her kasuba from his property while he is not present, she is not paid her kasuba unless she makes an oath that she had not already received it. Here too, if the husband were present, he might have claimed that she was already paid. Therefore, in his absence, the court makes this claim on his behalf and requires her to swear. The Mishnah now returns to two different laws taught earlier in the chapter. A. If a woman was put in charge of her husband's business and he suspects that she stole from him, he can make her swear that she did not steal. See Mishnah 4. B. If a husband makes a formal commitment that his heirs will not be able to make her swear, she does not have to swear when she collects her kasuba from them. See Mishnah 5. The next Tana disagrees with both of these laws. Rabbi Shimon says, whenever she claims her kasuba after her, father, uh, after her husband's death, the heirs of her husband can make her swear that she was not already paid, even if her husband had told her that they could not make her swear. However, in the, if the case is one in which she is not claiming her kasuba from the heirs, rather the issue is that they suspect her of stealing his property, the heirs cannot make her swear. According to Rabbi Shimon, a woman can never be made to swear that she did not steal from her husband's property.